Hey everybody, it's Chris Fravel from The Droning Company, and today we're going to be spotlighting the Spirit Drone by Ascent Aerosystems on this episode of Drones on the Road. I had the opportunity to travel to the Boston, Massachusetts area, more specifically Wilmington, Massachusetts, to visit our friends at Ascent Aerosystems. They have an incredible drone platform that I was really interested to learn more about. The Spirit is the drone that I'm talking about. It is one of the most unique looking drones I think I've ever seen in the industry. During my visit to Ascent Aerosystems, I was provided with a complete tour of their manufacturing facility, as well as an in and out crash course on the Spirit drone. Now, my liaison for the trip was marketing manager for Ascent Aerosystems, Katie Glenn, and she made sure that I had all of the information and knowledge that I needed about the company and made sure that I was comfortable during my trip as well. My encyclopedia of a person, though, about the Spirit drone was Matt Donofrio. He is the technical operations lead for Ascent Aerosystems, and he was the perfect guy for the job because not only is Matt super knowledgeable on everything that has to do with the Spirit, he's the guy that makes sure that everything looks hunky-dory when they push a Spirit out the door. He makes sure that drone is in tip-top condition and capable of conducting itself efficiently and effectively in the field. Basically, the drone doesn't get out the door to the client unless Matt says it's okay, and he's done it quite a bit. I also had the opportunity to meet and speak with Peter Fuchs, the CEO of Ascent Aerosystems. It was a great pleasure meeting Peter and getting to pick his brain a little bit about his vision for his company. Really cool stuff going on over at Ascent Aerosystems. Before we get into my entire experience with Matt, with Katie, with the Spirit drone, and everybody else that I met at Ascent Aerosystems, let's take a look at what the Spirit drone has to offer on paper. The Spirit by Ascent Aerosystem utilizes a coaxial design. There's nothing else like it in the drone industry right now. It also supports dual payloads and a wide variety of payload types at that. It has two brushless motors for its propulsion system. It's capable of flight times up to 53 minutes without a payload and 32 minutes with a payload. Its maximum operable altitude is 14,600 feet, that's 5,000 meters. Its maximum speed is 60 miles per hour or 100 kilometers per hour in manual mode and 40 miles per hour or 65 kilometers per hour in auto mode. It is IP56 rated, completely resistant to rain, sleet, snow, and any other type of precipitation. It's capable of operating in a temperature range from minus 40 to 130 degrees Fahrenheit or minus 40 to 54 degrees Celsius. It carries a class 8 wind rating and is capable of withstanding up to 40 mile an hour winds. That's 65 kilometers per hour. Whew. That is quite the resume. After getting that breakdown from Ascent on their spec sheet, I was more than interested in getting my hands on the Spirit and getting the opportunity to fly it and learn everything I could about it to make sure that it fit the billing that it was given. Now, one of the first things that I got to experience when I arrived to Ascent's headquarters in Wilmington, Massachusetts, was seeing their manufacturing line and how that whole process takes place. I gotta tell you, it's super impressive. And when I say this thing is American made, I mean it. Everything from top to bottom is made in America and assembled in their plant in Wilmington, Massachusetts. This is about as blue UAS as it gets when it comes to the structure of the drone. I mean, this thing is unlike anything I've ever seen in the industry before. The coaxial design is not just unique and intriguing to the eye, it's actually more efficient than any other quad on the market. We'll talk more about that in just a few minutes. Before we do that, let's familiarize ourselves with the components that make up this coaxial design. And I think the best way to do that is to do an inventory check on the base package you get with the Ascent Aerosystem Spirit drone. Now we're going to go over what comes in the case. Depending on your configuration, the Pelican can hold up to three batteries, two sets of landing legs, an additional set of propellers, the Spirit core itself with its own set of propellers, multiple GCS options, from a foam cutout allows you to carry either GCS. You have your telemetry lid, up to two payload options, and up to two battery chargers as well. 
One of the things that I liked most about the Spirit drone was just how compact and portable its components were. Now, when you order a Spirit package, you get a Pelican case with a custom foam insert depending upon the package that you ordered. Now, all of the pieces fit into that Pelican case, and while it's super compact and transportable for an enterprise solution, it's not even as small as it goes. Matt was describing to me at one point, Spirit offered a backpack solution. You could actually put pieces of the Spirit I'm talking the core of the Spirit, the battery that you need to fly it, plus the payload, the landing gear, everything that goes with it, into a backpack, throw it over your back, and take it out into the field. This is one of those few commercial UAVs out there that's not just versatile in its use case, but it's also super transportable and easy to tote around. And as far as assembly goes, well, that might be even easier and more convenient. So now we're gonna set up the vehicle. I like to start from the bottom up. I start with the payload and I attach the legs. Five pounds of pressure will secure them in place. To install the landing leg, simply have the leg release pin facing in the outward direction and insert with five pounds of pressure. You'll feel a click and that will tell you that the leg is securely locked in. To remove, simply pull straight out and remove the leg. From here, we would add the vehicle core so the spirit would go on. Click ring, simply twist it and it locks the vehicle in place. Next would be the primary flight battery. And then last would be the telemetry lid. This lid includes a micro hard radio, a remote ID module and a GPS compass. Our vehicle is assembled by our unique click rings. We have two arrows that show the orientation of the vehicle and the modular sections, how they line up. And the double circle open compared to double circle closed confirms that the module section is locked in. And the vehicle is now secure, ready to fly. And, and if that didn't look easy enough to you at first glance, let's go ahead and take a look at how fast you can assemble the Spirit drone from top to bottom once familiarizing yourself with how all the pieces fit together. Now that I've shown you how to set up the Spirit, let me show you how quickly you can set it up once you're familiar with the system. This is a one battery configuration. And if you wanted to add an additional battery for additional flight time, the second battery would go in between the vehicle and the payload. You're going to be really hard pressed to find a drone that's both as versatile as the Spirit when it comes to its payload compatibility and its use case applications, as well as transportable and super easy and convenient to set up. It's just gonna be a very difficult task to find something that checks all of the boxes the way that the Spirit does. Now, and speaking of payloads, Ascent doesn't just strive for efficiency and portability in its drone. It wants it to be as versatile and usable as possible in just about any use case application you can think of. That's why they went out of their way to make sure that the Spirit drone is compatible with a wide array of payload options, and they've also developed a solution to make it easier to fit your already existing payload inventory. We have multiple GCS options. Uh, we have the Arterian SkyNav, we have the UXV Navigator Tab 3, and we have the Hairlink. Um, two of which are Blue Solutions, and for Blue Solution Payload, we have Next Vision cameras, including the Raptor, the Nighthawk, and the Dragoneye. For non-Blue Solutions, we fully integrated all of UPRO's cameras. The vehicle is capable of carrying a wide range of payloads, and it makes customer payloads easy to integrate using our Payload Development Kit that gives you all the connections you need to integrate your own payloads, such as Exxon Technologies, GPS Denied LiDAR Scanner, as well as the Voxel 2. Um, for a GPS denied using inertial uh, telemetry. Um, for mapping solutions, we have multiple Sony cameras integrated onto Grimsey gimbals. 
Uh, this is only the tip of the iceberg. The PDK opens doors to incorporating any payload that you want. You know, one of the things that I fell in love with very quickly about the Spirit drone once I saw it in person was just how versatile this thing is in a variety of use case applications. It is super rangy. And when you add that PDK, that payload development kit into the mix, it makes the options seemingly limitless. I mean, you can literally attach just about any payload you can think of to the Spirit and use this drone in any use case you could possibly think of. To add credence to that, Matt was telling me offline that on a variety of occasions, they've helped the Boston PD with a variety of different mission types they needed, anything ranging from an RGB camera via the Sony a7 III, all the way to thermals and other types of scientific data collection. This thing has been reliable, not just for ascent, but for law enforcement in the city of Boston. And with innovation at the forefront of Ascent Aerosystems business model, there's quite literally nothing this company can't accomplish. They're constantly thinking outside the box and trying to develop new and more efficient solutions, not just for their drone, but for the company as a whole. And that brings me to the next thing that I really enjoyed about the company and its platforms was the way that they manufactured them. One of the things that really captured my attention was their water jet cutter. Now, when you look at the Ascent Aerosystem Spirit, you see all of the parts and all of the components that go into building that coaxial drone, all of them cut in-house at the warehouse in their Massachusetts location. Absolutely mind-blowing technology, and it's so cool how thoughtful they were in terms of how they developed from R&D to manufacturing to testing and then getting it in the hands of the client. Everything is super well thought out, and I have to say it's one thing that I really admire about Ascent Aerosystems that I haven't seen in many other companies in the industry. Combine that with all of the blue UAS payloads and ground stations that the Spirit's compatible with, and you've got a drone that's American made and American friendly, a commercial enterprise solution that is totally blue and can be used for federal, state, local government jobs and anything in between. But the question is, how does it fly? And as per usual, there's really only one way to find out how easy this drone is to fly and how effective it is once it's in the sky. And that's by getting me behind the sticks. Now I can tell you, and I think you've already figured it out, that I was extremely excited about flying the Spirit drone. However, one of the conditions of being able to fly it, as per Matt and Katie, was that I needed to set the drone up by myself. This is after Matt gave me a few crash courses on how to set it up. Really didn't take that long for me to get the hang of the system and the process. So here's my first attempt to again reinforce how easy the setup is on the Spirit drone at setting it up myself. As you saw a little bit earlier, we set up the Spirit drone. I'm gonna go ahead and show you just how easy that is. The team at Ascent set it up, we're just gonna have me set it up. First time ever setting this drone up on my own, just to show you how easy the system is from beginning to end. Then we're gonna take it up for a flight. So let's get started. We'll pull the base out of the case and then we'll begin to assemble the legs with it. So again, just real quick amount of pressure and it snaps right into place. One thing to be mindful of when you're setting this up is that there are indicators to tell you where you need to line everything up in order to use that ring system to get everything in place and connected. So we'll go ahead, put our last leg in. Go ahead and face this forward. The next, we're gonna pull the body of the spirit out of the case. So from here, we are going to set it down just like so. That's locked in. And now we just have to twist the ring. When it clicks, you're good to go. So we got the body, we got the base with the payload. Now we need to assemble a battery onto the top. Again, using those arrows on the front, to make sure everything's lined up. You twist the ring and click, it's set to go. Last part here is the top with our GPS module in it. Again, line it up with your arrows on the front and then we just twist the ring, we're set to go. Let me tell you, finally getting this thing in the air was an incredibly rewarding experience. I loved just about everything when it came to the flight experience with the Spirit by Ascent Aerosystems. The coaxial design might seem intimidating to most of us that have only ever flown quadcopters before, but I'm here to tell you, it's really not that bad. In fact, it's a pretty much seamless transition from a quadcopter design to the coaxial design of the Spirit. 
The only thing I didn't care for with the design of the Spirit Drone, that coaxial design and how everything flowed together, was the fact that when you were flying, your payload, the camera that you used through your visualization system on the ground station, didn't have great stabilization. Now, I wasn't using a payload that had a fantastic stabilization system on it. If you're using something like a Grimsey gimbal with a Sony, it may be better. The other thing I didn't care for was the fact that I could see the landing gear or the legs in the camera view pretty much all the time. Now, in terms of collecting data for scientific purposes or for applications outside of photo and video, that's really a non-issue because most of the payloads and sensors that pair with the Spirit can't even recognize the legs in the image. And the other thing is, is you don't really need it to be aesthetically pleasing anyway. On top of that, even though the stabilization wasn't great in the payload I was using, there are a variety of other payloads that do have better stabilization systems. And quite honestly, for most of the uses you're gonna use, you don't need fantastic stabilization anyway. As long as it's halfway decent and you can stay oriented with where the drone's at while using the camera feed to fly the drone, it's pretty much a done deal and it's easy to use. But enough about the negative, let's talk about the positive because there's a lot of positive here to talk about. Earlier, I teased that the coaxial design of the Spirit drone is more efficient when it comes to flight than that of a quadcopter. Now, when Ascent designed the Spirit, they had aerodynamics in mind, which I guess most drone companies would when developing their UAV platforms. However, Ascent was thinking outside the box. When you think about the way that a quadcopter is configured, you've got the front of your drone, the back of your drone, and then the two sides. When I want to gain momentum forward, I have to pitch the drone forward. Now, when I pitch the quadcopter forward, I'm actually creating more surface area against the resistance of the air, which creates more drag. I open it up, all of a sudden, we have more air resistance against the body of the drone, which is counterproductive to what I'm trying to do, which is move forward. When we switch to a coaxial design, we're going from this orientation to something more like this. So as I'm flying the drone forward, I add pitch forward, I'm actually reducing the surface area related to the air resistance, which means that it's more aerodynamic, there's less drag on the body of the drone, and it's more efficient for your overall flight. And that, my friends, is ingenuity at its finest. It may make sense to you now, and you're thinking, well, yeah, that makes complete sense. That's not very ingenious, but think about it. Almost every other company out there has been going with the status quo, that quadcopter, octocopter, whatever design where you have more drag as you pitch forward. Ascent went the opposite direction completely. They wanted to implement a system that would create less drag as you were trying to move in any given direction. That's genius. And quite frankly, that's an A freaking plus from me on that one. And if you're wondering, well, the design is one thing, transitioning from the quadcopter over to coaxial is one thing, does this still have all of the flight features that make me comfortable as a pilot? My answer to that is yes, it does. It's got altitude hold, it's got position hold via GPS, it's got return to home features on it for when you lose connectivity or when the battery gets low. It's got all of the creature comforts you could possibly want for your UAV platform, making it a truly perfect commercial UAV solution because you can put just about anybody behind the sticks on this drone and they're going to be successful flying it. It doesn't matter their experience level, it doesn't matter their skill level, as long as they're somewhat competent, they're going to be able to control the Spirit drone by Ascent Aerosystems, and they're gonna be able to do it pretty easily. As far as pricing is concerned, Ascent doesn't have anything published that's concrete, and the reason for that is pretty understandable. Ascent likes to customize the configurations of the Spirit drone for their clients based upon their need, and depending upon your configuration, the cost is going to vary. If you need something that's a little more high-end, a little bit more advanced, it might cost a little bit more than something that's a little bit more basic. So the point is, if you want to learn more about the Ascent Aerosystem Spirit drone, about pricing on it, getting a quote, whatever you need, the best course of action is to reach out to Ascent Aerosystems directly. Visit them online at ascentaerosystems.com. They're also across pretty much every social media platform that I can think of. In conclusion, I loved the Spirit. It was an absolutely awesome time getting to know everybody over at Ascent Aerosystems and of course, getting my hands on the Spirit drone and getting the opportunity to fly it. It was the most unique drone, the most unique configuration, and honestly, despite how unique it was, it's also super efficient and easy to use. If you combine all those things together, you've got a pretty stellar UAV platform here. Kudos and applause to Ascent Aerosystem. 
you absolutely blew me away with the spirit. I loved it. And if you want to learn more about it again, make sure you visit AscendAerosystems.com. If you liked this episode of Drones on the Road, make sure you let us know down below in the comment section. Also let us know, are you interested in learning more about the Spirit Drone? Would this be something that you'd fly, that you'd buy? Let us know down in the comments below. Make sure you leave a comment if you've got thoughts on this video or anything covered in the body of it. If you really liked this video, you love drone content for commercial UAV pilots, make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe to The Droning Company, and while you're at it, hit the bell icon too. Too, it'll give you a notification every time we post a new video. Until next time, I'm Chris Fravel with The Droning Company. Have a nice day.